So a few weeks ago I made a video about how I rigged my Sigma FP for filmmaking. And in that video I mentioned that if there was enough interest I would make a video about how I grade my Sigma FP footage. And sure enough there was, so thank you guys so much for that. So in this video I want to show you the process that I used to go from the raw cinnamon DNG files all the way to the final graded image that is ready to be shared. As well as give you the power grade that I use for free so then you can edit your footage the way that I edit mine. For those that are wondering, I am using the Sigma FP to film this talking head. And before we hop into DaVinci Resolve, I want to share with you a couple of the clips that I've made with the Sigma FP using this method of color grading. So now let's hop into DaVinci Resolve. So first things first, we're in our main editing tab. These are uh, the clips that I'll be showing today. Um, let's click on our first one. Let's go to the color tab. And in here, we're going to start in the camera raw tab. We're gonna change this from project to clip, color space to black magic design, and our gamma will automatically change to black magic design film. Uh, click highlight recovery. Our highlights will go all the way down to minus 100. Our exposure, I like bringing up to one and shadows to 25. And this is the base look that I use for pretty much all of my footage. Okay, next up, we're gonna go into our nodes and we're gonna add five nodes. Let's straighten this up so it looks a little bit better. And before we get started with anything, we're gonna go ahead and label all of our nodes. So the first one is going to be CST for color space transform. Next is gonna be sleece C slash E for curves and exposure. Next one is going to be CC for um, color correction. And then we have HSL. Then we have 709. And finally, we have film. I don't know why I put that in all caps, but there you go, it's in all caps. So first things, let's click on CST, go to effects, and we're gonna look up, oops, color space transform, and drag that on our footage. Please don't play. Gra drag that on our first node. Input color space, we're gonna change to Blackmagic Design Pocket 4K Film Gen 4. Input gamma is gonna be Blackmagic Design Film. Output color space is RE Wide Gamut 3. And our output gamma is RE Log C3. So now you can see our footage has gotten very, very flat. It was pretty flat before and now it's really flat. Next thing, we're gonna go into 709. Double click that, go to LUT, scroll up to Ari, and Ari Alexa Log C to 709. So now we have a Rec 709 image. That's before and that's after. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add a film look onto our footage. And this is honestly gonna nuke our footage with uh, contrast, uh, but that's okay because we're gonna correct for that. So we're gonna double click on film, go to LUT, and scroll down to film looks. And as you can see, there's a bunch of different looks that you can use. The one that I like is Kodak 2383D55. But again, I would just experiment with this and figure out what you like the most. But D55 is one that I've landed on. And as you can see, our footage is way too contrasty right now. So staying on looks, we're gonna go into the key tab and then we're gonna change our key output uh, gain to 0.8. This will just lessen the effects of this LUT just a little bit. So this is still before and this is after. So with this LUT, I find that the brighter parts of the image look generally fine, but it's just the darker parts of the image get really, really crushed. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to kind of correct for that by bringing up our shadows and exposure. First thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go into the camera raw tab and I'm just gonna increase our exposure just a little bit, maybe 1.5. Go back into C and E for curves and exposure. And I'm gonna put a point on each one of these vertical lines. And I'm just gonna start at the darker parts and let's just increase our exposure a little bit. As you can see, we're kind of destroying some of the contrast in the dark, so we'll go ahead and correct for that in a second. But let's just increase this a little bit. Maybe now we can darken that a bit. Maybe darken this. This is all gonna be, you know, personal preference. It kind of just depends on what you like. But I don't want these highlights to be blowing out, so 
Let's just kind of mess with the tone, the, uh, sorry, not the tone, the curves, and get this to a place that I like. Maybe I'll go into our HDR wheels and bring our highlights down a little bit, maybe bring up our shadows just a little. Okay, and there we go. So this is before the CNE node, and this is after. Um, color correction, I don't necessarily use for every clip. For this clip, I'm not gonna use it, but it's there just in case you want it. I like having separate nodes so I know what is being changed um, and where it's being changed. So if, if I do need to make an adjustment to something, I don't have to search through all the nodes. If I do try, if I need to color correct the footage, I know exactly where that is. So again, we're gonna skip it this time and we're gonna move into HSL. Um, I always just turn my saturation up to 60. Um, and then here, this is where you can do more um, localized adjustments and more specific changes if you want. So what I'm actually gonna do with this is, for example, let's just make this blue up here a little bit more saturated and a little bit brighter. So first thing I'm gonna do is let's go into hue versus saturation. I like a point at each of these. Let's click our eyedropper right here and click on that. And let's just increase that. You can see we can go overboard or you can completely desaturate it. I just want to turn it up just a little bit. Then we're going to go into hue versus luminance. Again, add all of our points, click on this, and I want to brighten that just a bit. So let's see a before and an after of just this tab. So now if I delete this, you can see what the image looks like when the only thing done to it is it being changed into the black magic color space. Let's bring back all of our adjustments. And in here, let's watch the video. Um, it's pretty shaky right now. As you can see, the Sigma FP doesn't have any image stabilization built into the camera. And the lenses that I use are all um, older vintage lenses. And so there isn't um, any stabilization in the lenses, obviously, anyways. And so I just use the stabilization in DaVinci right here. So now let's go back and let's watch that clip. One thing that I would recommend, um, so you don't have to do all of these changes every single time, is by going into gallery and double clicking this and just clicking grab still. And what this is gonna do is it's essentially saving all of your settings so you can copy and paste them on all of your other footage so you, again, you don't have to redo every single one of these. I'm not gonna be using this one that I just made. I'll still be using this one, that's the one that I've been using, that's one that I've made. Um, and that is the same one that'll be found in the description that you can download for free from our website if you are interested. Let's move on to the next clip and I'll show you what it is capable of. So here we go, let's just drag this over. And there we go. Let's, I'm, I'm just gonna quickly stabilize this clip and let's, um, let's watch it back. Just off the bat, I think it looks really, really nice. If there's anything that I would want to do, um, I'd go into HSL and just saturate these greens a little bit. Um, I kind of want them to just be a little bit more prevalent. So let's click that. I'm gonna add another dot right there. And let's just saturate those a little bit. Saturate those a little bit. There we go. Before and after. Boom. And as you can see with the paragraph that I'm using, I do have another node called grade. Um, this is kind of sort of similar to color correction where I don't necessarily use it on every clip, but I'd like having it there just in case I do want to use it. Um, but yeah, if you ever want to do another grade outside of or after the film look, you totally can. Uh, I think for this clip, I won't do it. Let's reset that and go on to our next clip. And gallery, we're just gonna drag this over. So again, kind of like the other clips, I think this looks really nice off rip. Um, this is kind of something that I don't do on, on every clip, but on some of them, I'll make a new node by clicking Option S, or I believe it's Alt S on PC. I'll go into the windows, click this guy, and I'll drag this. Let's feather it a little bit. Go into the curves, and then just kind of drop our exposure a bit. And as you can see, it's pretty subtle, but it just kind of draws, I think it, it helps to draw our attention on the subject as well as the sky. Next 
next up, same thing. Let's move quickly, go into gallery, drag this over. I think this is a little bit too bright in the shadows. So I'm going to decrease our exposure a little bit, maybe decrease our shadows to say 15. And then we're gonna go into our exposure slash curves. And let's start messing with, with some of these, maybe, maybe that. Brighten that up a little bit. Maybe darken that. There we go. I think that looks really nice. Now, as you can see, using the power grid that I'm using, it's pretty easy to gray this footage. Um, but I will be honest, when I first got the FP for quite some time, I didn't really love what I was getting from the camera. Um, and that's because I don't think that the camera is difficult to grade. It just was, it was definitely a learning experience coming from other cameras that don't shoot in Cinema DNG RAW. And, and so now that I have done a lot of that experimentation, I am a lot happier with how the footage looks. Um, but yeah, it did just take me quite some time to get comfortable with this footage. Um, let's quickly just grade the last two and we can wrap this video up. I think this is maybe a little bit bright, just a little bit. Let's go point. 0.7, maybe C and E, and mess with that a little bit, maybe do that. Okay, and here we go. This is the last clip. Same thing, go here. Um, kind of like the other ones, I just want to add a little bit more contrast to the footage. So let's drag this up. There you go, I think that looks, looks fantastic. And yeah, that's essentially it. Grading the Sigma FP is not hard. It, it really isn't hard, but it definitely is a bit of a learning experience, like I mentioned before, coming from other cameras. I think the quality of footage that you can get from the sensor is, is amazing. It looks so beautiful, it looks really, really natural. I'm definitely really, really happy I decided to go for the Sigma FP instead of a different camera. Because I think the quality that you get from the camera for the price is honestly unmatched. But that's, that's not to say that it's an easy camera to use because you, know, you don't have autofocus during video and the, the files can be kind of big and it, it, it has its downsides. There's no, there's no such thing as a perfect camera. But I think for the work that I want to do, the Sigma FP does check a lot of those boxes and it for sure keeps me on my toes. And it's, it's not a camera that you can just like turn on and use. It definitely takes some intention to get the camera to do what you want it to do. And that's kind of a, a really gratifying experience for me. You know, if, if you've watched some of the other videos on this channel, you know that I shoot a lot of film. And it, it almost reminds me of that where shooting film isn't as easy of an experience as say shooting digital but it feels a lot more gratifying and it feels like, if, if, I don't know, it, it's more satisfying to shoot on film for me than digital. And that's kind of the way I think of uh, using the Sigma FP is it's, it's more satisfying and I enjoy the process of shooting with the FP more than you know, a different camera. Before this, I owned uh, a Panasonic Lumix S5 II and that camera was excellent. But again, there's something special about the Sigma FP and what it's capable of. And I think on that note, I'm gonna start wrapping up the video Again, if you are interested in using the power grade that I'm using, um, I will leave that linked in the description below. You can download it for free. If you guys liked the video, please consider leaving a like or subscribing to the channel. It really does help me out a lot. Um, if you're interested in seeing more of my work, please consider you know, checking out more of the videos on my channel. I'll also leave my Instagram on the screen right here, as well as uh, my website and my Instagram linked in the description. So you can see more of my work that's not here on YouTube. And yeah. On that note, I'm going to end the video. Thank you guys again so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.